Welcome to this super fast Blender tutorial. You can download it at www.blender.org. I'm working with 2.78 as you can see. I'll just click left beside this splash screen and we can start off with the 3D window. There are a few items here. You've got this box which is currently selected. Uh, you can see it by the orange highlight around it. You have a camera. I'll just right click on the camera. And now the camera is selected and you have a light. I'll just right click the light and now this one is selected. Now that's the first thing you get to know, right clicking and selecting things. Now if I left click in the screen you see this little circle which is the 3D cursor. I'll explain later. And then you know, there's these remarkably annoying arrows out there. I'm going to remove them the first thing I do. I'll just go below to the buttons and click this little button here with the arrows it's gone next is the pivot point two buttons to the left i'm going to select 3d cursor this circle here is the 3d cursor now what does it do it is actually I'm, i set it as pivot point below here and now every transformation you make like rotation scale and anything like that is oriented around this circle if I just right click the box again, I'm going to rotate it. I'm just going to press R. And as I move my mouse, you can see it's rotating around the circle. So I cancel this operation by right clicking once more. And that's that. It jumps back to its original location. So I, if I set the cursor here, same for scaling. I press S and I just move, keep my mouse away from the cursor a bit because then you can scale more accurately. If I put my cursor here and press scale, it's, you don't have much movement. But if I keep my mouse here, press scale, S, it's moving a lot better. So I right click to cancel and it jumps back. So that's scaling in rotation. Now let's move it somewhere. I'll just press G for grab and now I'm moving the cube. But as you may have noticed, it's moving in a plane perpendicular to your view. If I want to move it within specific directions like X, Y or Z, I'll just press X and now it's moving along X. I press Y, it's moving along Y, which is the green line. I press Z and it, it's moving upward, downward. Holding down the control during this operation, will make it move in steps, in discrete steps. Below on the left, you can see it's at three steps from its original location. So it, it shows how much I move it in discrete steps. So you can more exactly place it. If I include shift and control together, the movement gets more refined. It's, step, it's making steps of zero point whatever along global Z in this case. I press X and you just have to press it once. You don't need to keep it pressed. And then I hold down Control and Shift and it's making really refined steps along X. Same goes for rotations. If I press R and I hold down Control, it's rotating at five degrees in steps of five degrees, including shift as well, it's moving at one degree. If you rotate and you press X, its axle of rotation is the X axis. I can also press control and now I'm rotating in steps of five degrees along X, around X actually. If I press Y, it's rotating around Y, Z. There you go. So during the operation, you can press X, Y and Z, whether you're Grabbing, scaling or rotating, doesn't matter. You can do that with any of these transformations. I just right click again and it's back. Now let me demonstrate scale as well. I'll just press S, it's scaling in any direction. If I press Y for instance, it's scaling along Y singularly. Or X, there you go, X and in steps, holding down control. Now let me open a file for a moment, keys are one in open recent, here you go, there's a keyboard and these are the keys that we discussed so far. Now let's discuss view. 
If I scroll my mouse wheel, you will zoom in and out. If I middle click, so I click my scroll wheel and drag, you will rotate the view. And in combination with shift, and middle click and drag, you pan the view. Those can come in handy quite well too. So now I'm panning over to the keypad or the numpad. There's a couple of keys there too. First off, keypad 1 is a front view. I'll just press it. Oh, and I'm going to pan it in view again. Keypad 3, right side view. Keypad 7, top view. And in combination with control, it's going to be the opposite. So control keypad 1 is back view. Control keypad 3 is a left side view. Control keypad 7 is a view from below. Of course, I will provide a link to the shortcut keys on the website. And for now, we return to our cube and practice these keys for a moment. First, let's switch to a top view, keypad 7. And I'm going to center my 3D cursor to the object selected. If it's out here, for instance, I press Shift S. You get a menu, snap menu, and I'm going to select cursor to selected, which snaps the cursor to the center of the selected object. Now I'm going to spell out the word ball with these cubes. First off, I'm going to scale it in the Y direction. So I press the S key, followed by the Y key in the Y direction. And then I hold down control as I move away from the cursor until in the bottom left I see the number 5. And I left click before I release the control key. Because if I release the control key and then left click, it might shift a little and then it's not scaled at exactly 5. Now I'm going to move it over to the left. I press the G, hold down control key, and I could press the X key, but I can also middle click and drag in the direction, and then it switches to the X direction as well. So that's a faster way to do things. I'm holding down control, I'm going moving it to the left for seven steps or so. And I left click before releasing the control and control. In the top left of the view screen, you can see top perspective view. The cube um, has a perspective to it. Well, this could be inconvenient for uh, if, when you're editing. Now you cannot clearly see if points are, are perfectly aligned. So we're going to work in an orthographic view. You can either move to the view menu here. And it says here view perspective orthographic. And next to that, you see numpad 5. I'm just going to press numpad 5. And now we're in, a, in an orthographic view. Now let's rotate this object. I'm going to snap my cursor to the object first. So con uh, shift S, snap menu, and then I'm selecting cursor to select it. And now I'm going to press R, rotate. And since we're looking down on, on uh, from a top view, you're rotating along the Z axis, in fact. So I'm holding down control key and until I see, well, let's make it 15 degrees or 20. Let's make it 15 degrees. And before releasing control, left click. Now I'm going to make a duplicate of this object. I just press shift D. And now I've got another block like this and it's automatically in grab mode. Now I could position it somewhere but I'm going, just going to right click so it jumps back to its original location and I'm going to press R, rotate. I hold down control and now I'm going to rotate it 30 degrees to the other direction until bottom left 30 degrees and before releasing control I'll left click. Now let's scale it a bit. I'll just press S, hold down control. Oh yeah, it's scaling in every direction. I just want the Y direction. I press Y, hold down control again. I'm scaling it to say 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is good. I left click before releasing control. And now I'm going to place it G2 uh, to the right and two downwards, somewhat something like that. Yeah, 
and I'm going to left click again. There we go. Now I'm going to snap to this block, Shift S, cursor selected. I'm going to duplicate it, Shift D, here we go. Right click and then rotate to the left 30 degrees, holding down control, left click. And now I'm moving this one, G, to the right, two steps. I left click before releasing control. Now I'm going to take this big block again, duplicate it, shift D, right click to put it back in its original position, then rotate. And I'm going to rotate this 30 degrees to the right, left click before releasing control, and now move it to the right, G, along X, let's say six steps. We have a W. Now let's continue with the A. So I just shift D, double duplicate this one. And I'm going to move it, holding down control, moving it to the right, let's say four steps and left click. And I'm going to snap my cursor to it, shift S, cursor selected. Again, shift D. And I could right click, but I could just say rotate. I just press R and holding down control and left click minus 30 degrees now i'm moving it to the right g two three steps well let's make it four steps to the right and i'm going to left click again now i would like to position my cursor straight in between these two bars so i hold down shift and right click the other bar as well and now both bars are selected and I press Shift S, Snap Menu, Cursor Selected, and my cursor jumps straight in between. And now it's time for another menu. I'm going to add a new cube. I press Shift A, and you get the Add menu. You can add a lot of stuff here. I'm going to select the top one, Mesh, and you get another list, and I'm going to select the cube. And there it is. Now there appears to be no more room for the L, so I'm just going to shift over. I'm going to press shift and middle click and drag to the left. So I'm making some room for the L here. So now I'll just select the big bar again, right click, snap my cursor to it, shift S, cursor selected. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to press R, 15 degrees to the right. And then left click before releasing control. Now I press G, move it four steps to the right, left click again. And I'm going to select the small cube, right click the small cube, shift D, duplicate. And I'm going to move it nine steps right, four steps down. I'm going to left click, snap my cursor to it, sniffed S, cursor selected. Scale along X, hold and control, and I'm going to scale it to 2. But you could also type it, by the way. So instead of holding down control, I'm just going to go to the keyboard and press 2.0 and then enter. That's another way to enter translations and stuff like that. Now let's zoom out a bit and move the view to the left a bit, shift, middle click and drag. And now I'm going to hold down shift and right click the big bar for the L. Now both of these blocks are selected. I press shift D, duplicate, and I hold down control, moving it to the right. Let's say seven steps and left click. And there you go. Wall. I do advise you to practice these transformations before you continue. Next we're going to edit shapes and this is a skill set that's highly required. And this is uh, the keys that we've discussed so far. I think I covered them all at, in this uh, web page. Now let's start with a new cube again. I'll move to the file menu and I'll select new. Reload, I click OK. Here's the cube. And there are these annoying arrows again. Let's just remove them once more. 
and the pivot point as well, 3D cursor. So, well, this is quite annoying. Each time you start up with a new file, you have to do that. So we're going to File menu and Save Startup File. Control U. I'm going to I'm just going to press Control U. Save Startup File. Now you don't need to do that anymore. In order to edit this cube, we're going to switch over to edit mode. Below in the bar, you can see there object mode, and I'm going to select edit mode. But the best thing to do is actually press the tab key, and you can quickly switch between the two modes. Now that I'm in the edit mode, I could just right click one of these corner points. We call them a vertex. So, and I can hold down shift to select multiple vertices. If you have a thousand vertices to select, you're going to be busy for a while. So we have a couple more selection tools available that I want to, would like to explain right now. First, I press the Z key and then you can work transparent. So you can select vertices from the back as well as the front at this point. And then I just press Z key again to switch back to a solid view. This is very convenient. Next, I can press A to select all or nothing. So I'll just press A and it selects nothing. I press A again, it selects all. If I just right click one of these vertices, I press A, it selects nothing. I press A again, it selects all. And I press C for circle selection. Here we go. I can scroll my mouse wheel to increase the size or decrease the size of the circle. Middle click to deselect vertices within the circle. I just click, middle click and drag. Here we go, I deselect. Now left click and drag to select vertices. I right click to end circle selection. Similarly, we also have box selection. I press the B. Now I'll just middle click and drag to deselect everything within the box. I press B again. I'll just left click to select everything or portion of the box. And finally we have lasso selection. I'll just hold down the control key and left click and drag. I can just select a lasso, something like this for instance, around the vertices that I need. And if I include shift, I press Ctrl and Shift, and now I left click and drag, I deselect. In case you would like to practice these selection tools, here's a nice overview of them. Now let's start editing. I wrote the word wall, now I'd like to build a wall. Let's make it a castle wall. First off, I'm just going to delete everything. I press A twice to make sure everything is selected. And then I press delete, the delete key. There's another menu. There's a lot of options there, but I'm just going to select vertices. So I'm going to select a front view and it seems that we're in a perspective view again. So I'm going to press keypad five and now we're in autographic view. And now you can see a grid in the background. That's very important later on. Now let's create a first vertex. I hold down the control key and just left click somewhere in the screen. There you go, there's our vertex. When I zoom in, you can see grid lines appearing, more refined grid lines. If I press G, hold down control, it's pretty clear I'm moving in steps of 0 0.1 below in the left. I just right click and zoom out until those more refined grid lines disappear. And now I'm going to press G again and hold on control. Now I'm moving in steps of one. I right click to jump back. So the more you zoom in, the more you refined your steps will be. Let's start with extrusion. This is the most powerful tool in any design program, I think. I could hold down control key and left click again and a single vertex becomes a line. I can keep clicking and I keep, keep drawing lines and that's most wonderful, but there's a better way of doing things. By the way, if I just 
select two vertices, a single line, control left click, a single line becomes a plane. Very interesting, but I'm going to do this differently. I'm just going to press control Z to revert back to one vertex. And I press the E for extrude. Now when I move, a single vertex becomes a line as well. But now I'm in grab mode, so I press the Z direction and I hold down control and I'm moving five steps upwards, something like that. I left click before releasing control and now we have a line with length of five. Now before we wrote the word wall, so now I decided to just design a wall, a castle wall to be precise. I just keep extruding, extrude, 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 extrude. I continue. This is a, a bit tedious, but never mind. There's a better way of doing it, but I'll explain later. Extrude. I could just duplicate and stuff, but I'm not going to do it right now. So this is a castle wall. Extrude downwards and now I connect the first vertex with the last I just press shift right click the first vertex and now I press F which means fix so there's another shortcut key for you now I'm going to select everything I'm going to rotate the view a bit and extrude along Y holding down control uh, one step in the y direction is good enough. Now, I'm going to fix this. I press F and I close up the wall. Let's take a top view. I'm going to select the transparency, Z. I select nothing, pressing A, clicking box selection, like so. Now I'm going to rotate the view again. Press Z again. And now I'm going to press F once more. And now we have a castle wall. I suggest you could try that too. Now, as you can see, with just one single tool, you can accomplish a lot of things already. So, but now we're going to continue. I would like to have a round tower attached to it. In order to do that, I'm going to select top view, keep at seven. I'm pressing Z for transparency. I hold on shift, middle mouse drag, just center it a bit. I'm zooming in like so. And I'm going to select these two points with the box selection. Now I'm going to snap my cursor to it. Shift S, cursor selected. I press A, deselect everything. Press B, box selection, and I'm going to select these two points. Now I press Shift D, duplicate, and scale along Y, and I'm going to type in zero. Now it's a single line at the center of this wall. Switch back to top view again. Now this is going to be interesting. I'm going to scroll out a bit. I'm going to position my cursor in the center of the tower. I press G, take two steps to the left, Shift S, snap cursor selected, and now I'm going to press undo, Ctrl Z. So this line is back to where it was. Now I'm going to rotate, I press R, let's say, uh, hold on, Ctrl, uh, about 30 degrees box selection and I'm going to fix this I press F now back to top view keep at 7 I press A box selection this one and I'm going to extrude again extrude rotate another 30 degrees like so and extrude rotate Holding down control, another 30 degrees. And I could continue like that, but that's quite tedious. So I'm going to use another tool we have in the left. I'm going to scroll down with the scroll wheel 
and there's the tools it's called spin I just click this button and it spins the wrong way around so I press ctrl Z and I'm going to select a bottom view ctrl keypad 7 now I press spin again and now it's turning the right way around however this is a more refined uh, shape than what we've done so far so I'm going to change some settings if you don't see this here there's probably a plus below and I'm gonna click it and this is the current operation that we're doing right now I'm going to say in 90 degrees I need three steps that's 30 degrees for each step so and I'm going to press the spin again I'm just gonna scroll here press pin and spin now I, this last one I don't need I just press delete vertices box selection B I select these four and fix now I would like to have this tower on the other side of the wall as well so in order to do that I'm going to need the 3d cursor and I'm, I could scale it along X a value of minus one I'll demonstrate I'll just click this vertex I'll shift right click the other vertex here press Z so I've got these both selected and I'm going to snap my cursor to this area snap cursor selection it's now straight in between in the middle of the wall the cursor now I'm going to select this round shape I'm going to select front view keep at one Z transparency select nothing a box selection and I'm going to select this tower shift D duplicate and now I'm in drag in grab mode so I just right click and now I can mirror it there's several ways I can do that I could just uh, press ctrl M that's another one's hot key for mirror and then below on the left in the bar it says select the mirror axis so I could press X and then just enter or left click to confirm and then I mirrored it but there's an easier way in my opinion but that's a personal matter I guess I'm just going to delete these delete vertices and select this tower again box selection shift duplicate right click to snap it back to its original position and now I'm going to scale by minus one scale along X and I'm going to type in minus one enter so that's the same result actually I could also just take a top view and just rotate the tower <laughs> it would be the same result as well in this manner now let's take a closer look at this little tower because there are several problems here that we have to address I press Z so I'm in solid view I'm going to move over and if I press A this tower is brighter on the inside than it is on the outside not like the rest that means that Blender does not know what the inside is and what the outside is it needs to recalculate the model because a face has only one direction in which it can be seen in most game engines and on most designs so let's just press ctrl Z I'm going to press ctrl N normals the normals are the direction in which the faces are facing so I'm just going to press ctrl N it's recalculating the normals and now it's like the other tower and there's another problem there's something wrong here let's take a closer look I'm, I'm pressing Z this tower is not part of the wall it's not attached unlike this one here you can see that there are all the lines are connected with this single vertex due to its uh, orange uh, shading here if I move over to the other tower here I press Z and right click one of these vertices and click again as you can see the tower is not connected so we have to reconnect it now there's one way to do that I just select everything pressing A twice and here's another menu I'm going to press W W is the specials menu it's got subdivide merge hide all kinds of things that we get to later on but at this moment I'm going to select remove doubles and then you have to pay attention to the top status bar somewhere 
remove doubles it says back there removed four vertices so it removed four of these vertices out here and now as you can see they are all connected however sometimes if it's a vertex is slightly misaligned you can specify a merge distance here so for instance point one for instance uh, but in this case point zero 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 one is good enough so so it removed four vertices now I'd like to extend these towers a bit more I'll select a front view pressing a to select nothing and transparent view now I'm going for box selection I'm going to extrude this extrude Z snap cursor selected and now for a pointy roof I'm going to extrude again Z something like this I'm holding down control left click and now I would like to bring these points together in the center now looks what look what happens I'm going to scale and I'm going to type in zero but it's now scaling towards the cursor I just right click to undo this one I could also scale in every direction except the Z direction and that's what we need right here I press scale and I could press X and it's only only extruding along X Y it's only extruding along Y I can also press shift Z and now it's scaling along X and Y if you press shift Z it scales not along Z to be more precise I can type in zero and enter but now also these dot these vertices are not connected with each other either if I click it doesn't do anything if I press Z I'm doing in a bit and right click as you might have noticed these are not connected so I just press B W remove doubles and it removed 12 vertices now let's do the other tower just in a different manner I'm going to box select first press A to deselect everything uh, here we go I'm going to select this area extrude Z extrude Z sort of like this I'm going to select another new menu which is merge the merge menu I press alt M merge merge at cursor center collapse in this case I'm going to select at center bang all the vertices are joined together at the center it's that easy now let's take a look at this tower it doesn't look like much of a tower just yet it looks more like a grain silo or something so we have to tidy it more and make it more detailed and first I'm going to select this roof and I'm going to make some adjustments to it well there's three more menus which are pretty simple you have the faces menu just press ctrl F and you have a faces menu there's a lot of tools in here that you can use and I suggest you check them out a bit if, if possible some have shortcut keys and some of them are pretty useful to know by heart and there's this the edge menu ctrl E there's also a lot of tools here edge slide at loops at rings oh dear don't get me started on those and we've got the vertex menu Control V and this is the one I'm interesting mostly at this point because well we learned how to merge things together now I would like to separate them as well if you go to the vertex menu Control V well the top one is Alt M it's merge we've been through that one already now you also have rip and rip fill I'm going to split I'm going to split these vertices it, it's got this shortcut key Y so I'm, I'm going to use Y and if I press G it's separated from the tower now I'm going to right click this top vertex I'm going to snap my cursor to it cursor selected and now I'm going to press Control keypad plus which is select more control and what it actually does it's selecting the adjacent vertices to the, the, the one selected already 
but if you don't remember exactly how it goes or how it was you always have these face edge and vertex menus and below in the bar you have the select menu you can always browse through that and there's a lot of familiar choices here already ctrl i inverse a d or select all circle select border select or box select as i said so and there is also select more or less control key control numpad plus select less there's quite a few options here so now i've selected the entire thing and i'm going to scale let's say i'm holding down control in the bottom left it's going to be 1.3 now let's select the front view keep that one and there i notice that these lines are not exactly straight through the middle they should be however i know what what's happening this is not a perfect circle if i'm taking a look take a look at this area here top view it's not a perfect circle so the center is not perfectly centered as well if you select if you snap your cursor to select it now that's a problem so let's go back ctrl z like so i'm just going to select these two snap cursor selected i'm going to select x zero scale enter snap cursor selected control keypad plus scale 1.3 and now it's okay yep that's a lot better now i'm going to snap my cursor to there below scale the tower scale z zero here you go and now i'm going to fill this up but i'm not going to use f i'm going to press alt f uh, this is a much nicer fill if i just press f it fills the entire area in between but th that's not th that's not what's supposed to be so i'm going to press alt f sometimes f fix doesn't work properly especially in situations like this so i'm going to press alt f now a front view i'm going to put some beams below it so i'm going to zoom in z duplicate to extrude one two three extrude one two three four extrude like so control keypad plus 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 side view g extrude a select this fix and there you have a beam now i'm going to show you a feature of whatever spin what more spin can do i'm going to select snap cursor selected and i'm going to select this beam ctrl keypad plus keypad 7 top view and now i'm going to spin it again i press spin and i'm going to select dupli i'm going to say six steps and i'm going to click 360 degrees enter and now it's spun this beam in dupli mode so it made duplicates all around and see there is uh here okay i press everything normals Control n and now it's okay i guess so that looks more like a tower there's just a slight problem however if you're designing to 3d print this model for instance or in well it used to be a problem in game design as well it must be a complete solid which is it's not if you look at the bottom of the tower it's not filled up yet so let, let's just fix this and this one as well i suppose fix so these, these towers are solid but the beams not a solid either it's not connected to the tower whatsoever it's just a loose loose thing a loose couple of faces here and it's not solid either 
So we're going to fix that. And there is a very nice tool for those things. I'm just going to fix this part. Auto keypad plus B and fix this part. Plus plus plus. There you go. And I'm going to select all these. Control P plus plus plus, delete them. And I'm going to spin this again. Top view. Oh, here's another one. Delete vertices. Let's make sure everything has got proper normals. Right? Control keep it plus. So there we go. And now I'm going to duply spin once more. I don't know why it didn't. 360 degrees. So these are all solid beams and I have to integrate them with the rest of the model. Um, delete these vertices. There you go. I have to integrate them with the rest of the model. Control keypad plus. And that's a Boolean operation. You can join or intersect uh, object with each other with Boolean intersection, which is part of the faces menu, I think. Let me see. Control F. Faces menu. Uh, intersect Boolean. I'm going to select this. And now it's making intersections. It's not working out. I'm going to select here in this window. I'm going to select Union. But it's not doing too well. I'll show you why. I'll just control, press Ctrl Z, undo. Side view. It cannot unite these because these are not sticking through the object. I just have to move it up a little bit like so. And now they're inside the object and now the balloon operation will work better. So let's try this again. Control faces menu, control F, intersect boolean. And now it merged them to come together perfectly. Except for this one though. Let's just remove this vertex. And I could clean it up a bit. But this, this is quite good already. Now let's make sure there are no doubles. I'll just press A. W. Specials menu. Remove doubles. And it still removed 13 vertices. Wow. Anyway, there's another problem. I'll press Z. There's a hole in the bucket, dear Liza. So I'm going to have to select all these vertices by hand or with circle select. And these are not so many just yet, but this is difficult. And there must be a faster way. Well, there is. I'll just do this. There you go. That's all. I right click an edge and hold Alt, the Alt key pressed and it selects an edge loop, as they so, sort of speak. So that's another convenient way to select things. And now I just press F and it's done. Now let's see if there's anything else wrong with it. I'll just press deselect everything. I press A, zoom out a bit. Uh, there we go. And now I'm going to the select menu and select by trait, non-manifolds. And there it is. There's a lot wrong with it still. I'll just press Z. And let me take a look at this. Yeah, inside this object there is a face here. Uh, that isn't visible. It's, if you put this under a printer it might get confused with that. So it doesn't know what's inside, what's outside. I have to delete this face. And there's probably one here as well. Yeah, there's a face inside here too. Let's just remove that. So now it's completely hollow, I suppose. So let's just remove an edge, for instance. Delete edges. Yeah, it's completely... Let's remove this edge. Delete edges. 
and it seems like it's completely hollow now. So I'm going to select the edge loop. I press Alt and right click. Alt, and now I press Alt F and it's filling it up. Okay, that's good. Now let's see if there's any other non-manifolds. So select menu, select by trade, non-manifold. You could also use Shift, Control, Alt, M. That's a handful though. And there's still a tiny thing wrong with it out there. Let's zoom in on it. I can use keypad period and it will automatically zoom and center the selected keypad period. That's another interesting option. And there's a face inside here too. Well, delete faces. So now it shouldn't have any non manifold. Control Shift Alt M. Dear goodness. Yeah, it's completely, completely cleaned up right now. Now let's continue with another grade two, the subdivision. I'll just get to solid view. Here we go. And I'm going to select two edges to subdivide. Um, you might already have seen it. Below the three buttons here, I'm going to select the middle one, edge selection. And let's just pick up some random face here, two edges. These two, for instance, I'm going to subdivide these two, W, subdivide. There it is. You might have seen it before. Now, I'm going back to vertex and selection. Snap my cursor over here, cursor selected, shift S, and scale this, scale Z zero. There we go. And now I can just remove this face, or let's just extrude it first from a top view, Z, extrude, And well, we're done. We have a we have a window in it. It's not a beautiful window, but it's a window. You know what? I'm going to make it a nicer window. All right. And I'm going to introduce you to another tool, which is proportional editing. First of all, I'm going to remove this one. I'm going to face selection. I'm going to right click this one and press delete, delete vertices. So this window is gone. I'm going to select vertices, I press Alt, and I select an edge loop, just like before. You can, with Alt, you can select an edge loop, like this one, like this one. With Alt and Control together, you select an edge ring, which is this. Well, that's quite beautiful as well. Just select an edge with Alt or Alt Control, and you will find out. Now, I'm going to fix this for a moment. Fix. Snap cursor selected. And now I need inset faces. So I press the I for inset faces. Watch this. I have an inset face. I'm just going to hold shift for somewhat more refined motion. And there we go. Something like this. And now I'm going to select an edge ring but I'm going to select faces, face selection first. Here we go, let's deselect everything. I'm going to select this edge here. I press Alt and Control together and I'm going to select these faces. And this is an edge ring, Alt and Control. Now I'm going to extrude this, extrude just a little bit like so. Uh, this is a much nicer window, and now here's where the proportional editing kicks in. First, I'm going to edge selection. I'm going to select an edge ring as, again. I press Alt and Control. I select this edge, and I've selected all the adjacent edges, or at least all the parallel edges. That's what an edge ring does. And I only need the top ones. I don't need these. I just middle click. There we go. I just need these and I'm going to subdivide W, subdivide. And in the left, this operation, you can specify the number of cut, cuts. So I'm going to select five cuts. And now I'm going to show you proportional editing. I've just select an edge loop, press Alt and this edge. 
I've got all these edges selected. I'm going down to this button here below, this circle. I'm going to select connect it or pro enable anyway. Let's enable it. And this is what they call proportional editing mode. Well, let's see what happens. I press G. A long Z upwards. And now I can just define the strength of it all. You know, everything is moving along with it. That's ugly. That's proportional editing. Uh, you can select a pattern. I'm going to say inverse square, for instance. G, Z, G, Z. But it's too much. I'm just going, going to scroll until just the window is moved. Something like this. Mm, something like this. Yeah, that's good. So this is proportional editing. And I'm going, I can turn it off. Disable. And now this is a much nicer window already. Just to clarify, just once more, what the difference is between an edge loop and an edge ring. I have edges selected right now. Edge, edge selection mode. If I press Alt and click this edge, it's selecting an edge loop. If I press Alt and Control and select, for instance, this edge, it's selecting an edge ring. Now I can just go to vertex selection mode and the entire window is selected. Same as for faces. If I select an edge ring for faces, it's going to be like this. Now with regard to proportional editing, I'm going to veer off a bit. I'm just going to hide this, select all, hide. I'm going to design a car wheel. So I'm just going to create a new vertex, front view, snap selection to grid. Snap selection to grid. There we go. Snap cursor selected. And I'm going to extrude. 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 Because with a car wheel is a perfect example to show some proportional editing. I'm going to move this, say, five steps. Like so. Duplicate. And I'm going to move this another ten steps. Like so, select them all. Here's loop selection is again. Top view spin, spin, and let's make it six steps. Spin, spin, spin. Select all, remove doubles. So now I have two rings here. Now it's time to create the spokes of the wheel. I'll take the top view, uh, transparent view, Z, C. I'm just going to. Select these for the spokes, a little bit smaller maybe, sure, this is for the spokes. Now I'm going to extrude, the outer ring is 15, the inner ring is 5, or actually 10 and 30, so I'm going to have to scale three times, scale, shift Z, three times, and, oh I forgot something, I'm going to press this button. It removes doubles automatically. Let's try this again. Extrude, scale, shift, Z, three. Enter. And now it's merged. Now I delete these faces and it's hollow. Now I'm gonna make a copy of this. Duplicate, rotate, Z, 90. And a ring selection again. Control, Alt, and I use shift for multiple ring selections. So, like so. Duplicate, rotate, Z, 90, or 180. These are the spokes of the wheels. And now I have to remove these faces in here. Let's do that. Multiple ring selections, Ctrl, Alt, Shift. And I'm going to faces, deselect these faces. And now I can just delete those. And now... We have this. This is the inside of a, the rim of the car wheel. Now I'm going to use another trick. I'm going to extrude these two. Extrude. Right click. Now I'm going to scale it um, in one step. Now how can I do that? Scale. 
then I can just try and do it like this, but it's shift C. Uh, that's difficult. I'm, I'm going to use a calculation. Um, the outer ring is 30. And if I want to scale, extrude this one, I have to use 32. I press the asterisk, asterisk in, uh, on top of the keyboard, shift eight, asterisk. And now I can calculate how much it should scale. I press 32 divided by 30. You can see it below in the screen. I press enter. And now this section here is exactly one. There we go. Uh, uh, select all normals. And now I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. G like so. And I'm going to design the tire itself. Extrude. Snap cursor selected. Scale sort of like this. Yeah, G, extrude, fix. It's a little bit exaggerated, I think, but never mind. Scale Z, sort of like this. That's good enough. Snap selection to grid. Yeah, this is good. I'm going to switch back to, switch my cursor back to uh, the center. Snap cursor selected. So now I'm going to spin this, seven, spin, 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 A, A, remove doubles, normals. So it's like this, that's the tire. And now I'm going to use proportional editing. First these spokes, I selected edges, edge selection mode, and now I selected all the edges of the spokes. So I'm just gonna subdivide these. Subdivide one, two, three, four, five. Select the center here, and now I'm going to rotate with proportional editing on, of course. Uh, rotate and scroll my wheel a bit, sort of like this. Oh, that looks nice. Uh -huh. I'm going to lower this a bit, G, oh, proportional disable, sort of like this, right, plus, yeah, that's what I need, and I'm going to turn it on again, connect it, G, uh -huh. I could make it sharp, There you go. Now just close it up. Extrude, right click, Alt M, merge at center, at the side as well. Extrude, Alt merge at center. And now I'm going to use a new tool, which is a bevel. I'm just gonna right click this edge. See, it's loop selection is very, very handy. And I'm going to press Ctrl B. Now, as I move away from the mouse, I can see, you can clearly see, see I'm, I'm beveling things. I can just start typing point, uh, let's say one, for instance, that's a bit big, point five. Right, the other one side as well. Sure, Control B, 0 0.5, there we go. There's a bevel. Now I'm going to subdivide these edges, just edge selection menu, these edges. W, subdivide, another five cuts. Yeah, that's good. And I'm going to select this. Snap cursor selected, rotate, Z, like so. Selecting the outside edges, rotate Z, like this, for instance. Now, with these selected, I'm going to extrude these faces, but I'm going to extrude them individually. Now, how does that work? 
normally you just press E to extrude. Now I just press Alt E to extrude to individual faces. And just slightly. One is good. Enter. And now I'm going to bevel them as well. Ctrl B. 0.5 again. 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is nice. Let's extrude uh, them 0.3 as well. Alt E, extrude individual faces 0.3. And now bevel 0.3. G. And now they're all connected. And we have a tire profile here. And that's, that's it actually. I forgot to mention, however, the bevel has several options as well. So if I'm going to select at this point, snap cursor selected, I'm going to disable proportional editing, I'm going to scale Z0. So um, I need the, don't need these edges anymore. And I could just delete them and then I have to fill this area up again. I don't want to do that. There must be a faster way and there is. I press X and you have a delete menu. Instead of the delete key, I press X. And I'm going to dissolve edges. Let's see what happens. They're gone, but the structure remains intact. So now I'm going to select this edge again and bevel again. Say something like this, 0.5 or something, enter. And on the left here, you have, you have this menu where you can select multiple things like segments. I'm just going to increase the number of segments. It's more rounded now, but the profile is very interesting as well. I can just bevel inwards, for instance, like this. Now, when I press Alt H, just deselect everything for a moment. Alt H, there's my castle. It's a bit tiny compared to the wheel, but never mind. It's, uh, it doesn't matter. I just want to separate the wheel as a separated object. So I, uh, what I do is I invert this selection, Control I, and I'm going to separate this by pressing P, separate by selection. And now it's a separate object. I just press Tab switch to object mode and I can select these as individual objects as you can see. So I can now hide this object for the time being. Hide, press H and we can continue with this. Now you might feel a bit overwhelmed with all these shortcuts but it's actually the top six entries in here that you need to be concerned about. The rest is you can find them in, uh, in the tools panel or in menus or whatever. So you don't need to remember them all. Actually, if I just use extrude and fix and well, your transforms and such and spin, you can do most designs just like that. I can, I could do these towers in two minutes with just these tools. You know what? I'm kind of inclined to try this. Two minutes, these towers. So, on your marks, get set. Snap selection to cursor, extrude, keep it plus. Like this, 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 like that. Man, this is tedious. Select all snap to grid. Here we go. Z, Z, B. Fix, fix, fix. Normals. Duplicate snap. Uh, merge at center. Front view. Extrude like this. Extrude, extrude like this. Snap cursor. Uh, snap cursor selected. Top view. Spin, uh, dupli, six, let's make that 12, like so. Mm. Remove doubles, normals, fix, here we go. 
Let's go to here. Snap cursor selected. Shift add cube. I'm going to add a cube. Here it is. B G sort of like this. Yep. G, snap cursor selected. Spin and let's make it duply and then six of them like so. Delete vertices. And we have a tower, snap cursor selected, duplicate mirror, or scale minus one, scale minus one, and here's our towers. All, well, eight seconds to spare, but it's not complete, of course. All right, now two minutes are up. So I do have the towers. But I still have to merge them together because these are not solids. This is just loose geometry. These all are loose geometry. So I'm just going to use this boolean operation here. These booleans first. Faces. Booleans. Uh, intersect boolean. That's a union. That seems right. W remove doubles. Normals, um, of course, there might be an error in there. Let's see, non manifolds, nothing. It's perfect, oh, beautiful. All right, so now I have to connect these, this, these walls. So, what I'm going to do is this scale x a little bit wider, maybe. These faces are coplanar, or however you may call it. I just have to move it like this. And when I now, when I do this, intersect boolean, I can just delete these edges. I think I could do that. Delete these edges. But I'm missing some, some parts of it, but you know, I'm clicking this one and I'm keeping control pressed and then click this one. Now it's making a complete loop from the first to the last vertex that I selected. So fix this one. Let's show it once more. I click this one, I rotate, hold down control and click the other one. And it's selecting an entire loop from first to last vertex. Fix this one and fix this one. Normals. Let's see if there's non-manifolds. Nothing. Okay, I'm done. So you've seen I, I mostly use just extrude and fix and the transforms, the selection tools and spin. That's mostly what I use. And I could design anything with that. And there's, also, of course, the proportional edit. It's a nice addition, as well as the auto-remove doubles and the face edge vertex selection. So other than that, you can find things in the toolbar on the left. And here's some menus. Add menu, specials menu. But these subdivisions, subdivide, remove doubles, they're in the toolbar as well. And then there's a faces edge and vertex menu. Splitting things can be convenient. And the bevel, of course. But yeah, that's it. So let's continue with this tower. Um, if I look at this tower, I don't see a tower. I see something more like a firecracker or something. Let's make it a bit nicer. Let's say I'm going to vertex selection, I'm going to select this window, I'm going to select this, and I'm going to delete it all. Delete vertices. Now it's completely gone. Yay! I'm going to snap my cursor to this area. I'm going to extrude scale Z0. There you go. Now, I'm going to extrude again. And now I have a couple of vertices that don't make sense. These 
I don't need. I can just say, you click these three, click the last one, alt merge, add last. Sure, why not? Okay, snap cursor selected, extrude, scale, shift C, G, sort of like this. Now extrude again. So we have this tower. Now just adding a little bit of decoration here. And I'm going to make a very pointy tower. Extrude. Merge at center. So this is a very pointy tower. Snap cursor selected. Keep it plus. I'm going to split it. Why? Scale, Shift C. Sort of like this. Right. Now some ornaments. And the beams again, but kind of differently. I'm going to take a look at the side view. Duplicate. G, one, two, three, four. Ah, let's do it like, like this. For instance, snap, cursor selected. Like so. Uh, now I'm going to press spin. The wrong way around. Well, you can do two things. I can, I can move here. I can say the axis is one. Uh, I could make, make it minus one. Let's do that. I'm going to turn on proportional editing. Connected. And I'm going to select smooth. I'm going to select this one. G. Uh, too many points. Let's spin this again. The other way around. Okay. Control, keep at three. Spin. Ah, oh, that's better. But I don't need so many steps. So I'm just going to reduce it a bit. Like five steps or so. G. Something like that. Yay. G. Proportional editing off. Disable. Extrude. 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 It's, it's not, you know, this is fix. Yeah, that's good. Who cares? At this moment, so it's sticking inside the model. I'm going to snap my cursor to this. Control Z, jump back to that. Front view, top view, and I'm going to spin to pre. So spin. Uh, that's going to be 6 over 360 degrees. I don't, see, don't even need spin dupli. It seems to recognize that this is a single solid. So it, it already automatically says, okay, you want to do spin duplicate, I suppose. Well, very nice. Normals, like so. Yay! And then this, there's this. This is quite annoying as well. I don't need these lines. C. I press G twice. Bang. There you go. It's gone. Well, G, if you press G, you can move it around. But if you press G twice, G, I can move it along uh, G, G, I move it along a line, like so, or this direction. And similar here. Let's just press G twice, I can move it along here, or along this line, or along this line, or along this line. So, in this case, if I press G twice, G, G, it's fixed. Pressing GG twice. So I'm just doing it for all of them, except this one. GG. And this one. GG. And they're gone. It's that simple. 
So, okay, that's another tool that you find out about now. Uh, yeah, this is looking somewhat more like a tower. Now, I'm going to give this roof a little bit more detail because I think this is a bit flat, right? I need to change that a bit. So I'm going to make this a proper roof. I'm going to snap my cursor to this area. Control keep it plus this area. And I'm going to split it. Control V vertex menu. I'm going to split rip or split these vertices. That's it. Split. Now it's a separate entity. Now front view. I'm going to give this roof a little bit of an edge. Scale. Something like this. And this is going to be the inside of the roof. It, it needs tiles or something. So I'm going to flip the normals because now they're facing outward. Control face menu, F, flip normals. And if, as you can see, it's darker now. And now I'm going to use another, another nice tool, which is solidify. It's also in the faces menu. menu. Control F, faces menu, and solidify now you don't see much yet because it's very thin it's a very thin wall which it's created so i'm going to the thickness i'm going to select 0 0.1 and now it's, it's got actually it's a solid it's a solid roof just gonna invert hide see it's it's a cone now I'm not going to use this vertex here. Delete vertices. Alt H, unhide. And, and now we have an opening here. This needs to be closed up. However, fix will not do that. Alt F maybe. Yeah, in this case it does. But in case it doesn't, well, let me give you an example, for instance. Fix, like so. Seven. I'm going to, uh, three, four, five. Fix. These loops, I have the same amount of vertices, but I'm to Alt F, it, uh, wow. Blender has gotten better, didn't it? But okay, there's a tool here. Control E, Edge, Menu, and it says here Bridge Edge Loops. However, you have a lot of options here. I could twist it, increase the number of cuts, and I could smoothness. Um, profile factor so there's a lot of stuff you can do with bridging edge loops just delete vertices in this case alt f did fix the whole thing but i'm going to use bridge loop in this case Control e edge menu bridge edge loops and we're done so now it's got some more detail to the roof, which is pretty nice. Uh, this wall is much too small in relation to the tower, I think. So let's make a bigger wall. I'm going to edit mode. I'm going to delete this rocket here. This firecracker. Let's just pick this up. Duplicate. Uh, extrude. B. Fix. Um, snap cursor selected. While I'm at it, I can just as well copy the tower as well. normals so this looks a bit better 
Ah, still a bit small this wall. Y G sort of like this. Yeah, sure. Hmm. Delete vertices. G. Yeah. All right. Remove doubles. We didn't remove any doubles. Oh, therefore, there. Fix. Fix. So um, let's make two more towers. Snap cursor selected. I'm going to create a new vertex. Snap selection to cursor. Snap cursor selected. Jump back to the vertex. Rotate 90 degrees. Snap cursor selected. Delete this vertex. Select everything. Duplicate a mirror this way. Recalculate normals. I'm going to remove a couple of vertices. For instance, this one and this one, as well as this one and this one. Delete vertices. And now I'm going to select the walls. Keypad plus. Yeah. Snap cursor selected. Duplicate, rotate. Just a second. Keep it plus. Duplicate, rotate. And there you have it. Remove doubles. Nothing. So, my castle is complete. Now I'd like to put it on top of a mountain. So I'm going to create a mountain. First off, I'm just going to determine the size of the thing and let's say something like this. This area. Fix. Snap selection to grid. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to move my... Yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to hide this area. H. And now I'm going to subdivide this thing. Normals. Subdivide. W. It's also in the menu here somewhere. Subdivide right here. I'm going to give it uh, 10 cuts. And I'm going to subdivide it again. And again. And again. And again. Again. Ooh, that's a lot of vertices. So now I'm going to select a couple of points here, sort of like this. Proportional editing is on, and I'm setting it to smooth, for instance. And now I'm going to press G, Z. And I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel until, well, I've got something here. Let's press G again. Well, these look like mountains somewhat. Like that. Top view. I'm going to select a couple of new points here. Something like that, for instance. G, Z. G. Mm. Oh, that looks like a mountain already. Let's see. G. G, Z. Yeah. G, Z. Let's select a sharp fall off. Let's see what happens. GZ downwards a bit. Now 
going to do something really funny. I'm going to add a random fall off, which means a lot of points here. Something with a random fall off. So around this, these areas, for instance, random G C. Oh my goodness. Something like that. It's a uh, it's a bit messy. So I'm going to smooth things over a bit. W smooth. That's getting better. And now I'm going to reduce the number of vertices. That's a special tool again of course I'm going to look at it um, it says intersect boolean um, well I don't need that I need decimate it's called decimate D -E -C. Deci there it is decimate geometry and here it says how much of, of uh, the vertices you would like to have removed I'm going to say 0 0.01 0 0.01 And as you can see, we've got ourselves a mountain. Now let's put our castle somewhere. I'm going to select, deselect, Alt H, and here's our castle. I'm going to separate this selection, make it a separate object. Press P, separate. And now I'm going to move it, uh, say, object mode G, somewhere over here front view somewhere over here this is a nice area where it should fit I'm going to make it a little bit higher oh uh, disable G sort of like this so that it sticks in everywhere like some somewhat like this top view selecting the mountain Oh, wait a minute, snap cursor selected, here we go, uh, proportional edit on, smooth, scale Z, zero, I could just, G, Z, a little bit smaller, G, let's see, G. So, now this castle is really sticking in there. G, Z. Yeah, so, now, that's that. So, up to this point, we just used uh, extrusions and uh, some design tools and stuff. But there are met other methods to create shapes and such. And one of them is sculpting. I'm going to carve a path through this mountain and I'm going to use sculpt mode. So instead of edit mode, we get sculpt mode. Now, I've selected the mountain, I think. And yes, sculpt draw seems a nice idea. I'm just going to increase its strength to one just to exaggerate a bit and let's look what happens. So. If I draw, yeah, you can see it's uh, it's adding. I'm just drawing the mountain out like so, and this is nice. But you, you can see if I start drawing on the right side, it also draws all kinds of stuff, and that's not very good. That's because there is a symmetry lock. I'm going down there, and I'm going to disable the X mirror, and I'm going to say, well, let's do this again, right? I'm just going to draw, but look at what happens here now. Um, this is a bit uh, funny. This shouldn't happen either. So I'm just going to redo everything. I'm going to select dynamic topography. 
now it adds to it I'm gonna show you again now I'm going to draw here and as you can see I can just it refines the mesh as you draw along this side of the mountain and now I can select uh, subtract let's just remove instead of add for a minute that's funny stuff <laughs> I'm carving out a path as you can see it's it's a bit crude right now so <laughs> I have to do that over again anyway this is how it works so now I'm going to join this castle with this mountain Ctrl J edit mode and now I'm going to cut out this castle from this mountain uh, this, uh, that's uh, Ctrl face menu intersect boolean let's make it a union like so I'm going to snap my cursor to this area see you know I could just scale Z zero I can turn this off for a moment and uh, I would like to make this flat again so I'm going to select these C C C like so I don't need these so I've got the inside before oh, there's another one like this I'm going to hide these and now I'm, I can safely select all of these and scale Z zero so that's done and alt hide alt hide so now I've got a lot of vertices that are unnecessary I would like to make this I will make this an even plane how do I do that I'm going to delete it's in, it's in the toolbar limited dissolve and now it's all an even plane I could try that for these as well see um, see let's just select more Let's select all. Delete, limited, dissolve. So that cleaned up a lot, quite a lot of uh, the vertices, uh, except this one, GG. Anyway, yeah, I can put in a gate. I'm going to use the knife project for that. I'll just select this vertex, for instance. Scale Z zero. Mm -hmm. Duplicate, extrude, extrude, G, snap, cursor selected, spin, four steps, spin, extrude, something like this, fix, yeah, G, so this is going to be my gate right well gee I'm gonna put it here right in front of it and now I'm gonna separate this selection it's a separate object now but it's still selected now I'm going to knife project front view knife project and now I have got myself a gate here so let me select this side of the wall and just hide it and let's do the same thing once again my project like so now I can just remove this object unhide everything and I've got uh, a gate here I'm gonna remove these faces delete faces so let's see if I can see okay these I'm gonna control e bridge bridge edge loops 
it's filling it up. GG, GG, all done. Now, I spoke about uh, mostly designing with Blender. I didn't discuss anything about textures or animation or I just talked about designing things and I think that's the most important thing to do and I would like to add some more tools to the repertoire um, front view which is for instance oh, I'm going to uh, keep it zip keep it period I'm going to zoom in here for a moment, uh, snap selection to grid, snap cursor to selected, delete vertices. I'm going to add a circle, for instance. Right, and I'm, so let's make it 16 or 12, like so, 12 vertices. And zooming out a bit, I'm going to move it, one, two, three, something like that. Spin. Sp uh -huh. Let's make it four steps. Okay, let's make it five steps. And then spin again. Select these. For instance, if I would like to make a chain, I'm going to extrude. I'll keep it plus, snap cursor selected. Duplicate scale Z minus one. And keep it plus, new normals. Here's a link for the chain very quickly, very easily. Now I'm going to, to duplicate this. It needs to be moved eight upwards. So I'm going to move it 16 upwards and I'll show you why. I'm going to repeat this last action. So I'm going to press, press spacebar, repeat. There it is, repeat last, shift R. It's doing exactly what you did last time. I moved it 16 upwards. Duplicate, move upwards 16. So I'm going to keep pressing Shift R. I keep it pressed like this. Like so. I'm going to select them all. Top view. Now I'm going to switch this off. Automatically remove doubles. Duplicate, rotate. Front view once more. Now this time I'm going to moving it eight up, like so. And here we have our chain, very quickly. So repeat last action is for this kind of thing, it's very useful. Another feature would be screwing things around. No pun intended. Here's the screw in the toolbar. So I'm going to snap this to grid, G, I'm going to put it right here, like so, snap cursor selected. Now I'm going to move it, like so, extrude, extrude, and I'm going to put it here, for instance, like so. I'm going to select this, and now I'm going to select the screw. Let's say steps 16 or so. Well, what it did, it made the revolution around the z-axis, around your cursor. And after one revolution, it connects top to bottom. See, it connects beginning to end. This is your thing and it ends up here. So, and it's doing that with each revolution. So I'm going to click a couple more times. See, that's a very nice tool. For instance, snap selection to cursor, G, spin, spin, extrude, for instance, like this, duplicate, G, and I'm going to spin it, screw it, screw it. I'm going to mirror this one, scale minus one. I'm going to move it over here, spin this one, screw this one as well. One more. B, remove doubles. I'm going to select these, delete faces. And here we go. A spring, normals. 
So that's another great feature. There's just a few more tools to talk about for a short moment. One of them is a subdivision surface or subserve. I'm just going to resize this panel a bit like so. And I don't need the top panel, just right click on the edge between these panels, right click, join area and select upwards. And uh, I make sure this object is selected. And now I'm going to this uh, button with the wrench on it. This is where we find the modifiers. If I click this, you get an entire list. Some of them are familiar to you, probably like Boolean, Decimate, Solidify. Those can be applied to entire objects as well. Let's see, a subdivision surface. In the view, I'm going to select two subdivisions and look at how smooth this tire gets. Yeah, that's that's the subdivision surface. Let me just remove this for a moment and just add a cube. Shift A, cube. Just zoom in, keep that period. So, I'm, I'm going to add the sub, subdivision surface here. And the cube is no longer a cube. Just two, two subdivisions. I press edit mode. And this cube has become mainly more like the control points for these surfaces. I can just pre press G. Oh, uh, disable G. And um, if I would like a flat surface, I just, yeah, turn this off. Extrude. Right click, snaps back in place. Now it, it's got a flat side here. And I could also just uh, make creases like Control E, Edge Menu, Edge Crease. I just type in one. That's no good. I'm going to select these. Sh Shift E. And it's making sharp edges. Now you can either edit the box to. Uh, to change this surface, but I can also just remove the box from view, or like so, and I can just edit these points, G, or I can just well, look at the box for a moment while you saw that. I can just see the box here, but if I remove this modifier, This cross here, we've got our box back and Ctrl Z. So the modifier it doesn't do anything until you applied it. Now I'm going to get back to edit mode. And now there is no more modifier. It has accepted all these vertices. Now it would not be nice if I left out curves in this tutorial. I'm going to add Shift A curve. Let's say the year. Now let's zoom in a bit, Ctrl keypad, or just keypad period. This is a curve. I can edit this curve, extrude. And that's a nice tool. However, I would like to make this a tube. So I'm going to add Shift A, a mesh circle. Now let's scale it down a bit. Put it here somewhere, doesn't matter so much. And this is a mesh and this is a curve. I'm going to change this into a curve as well. Alt C, convert, curve from mesh. Now, what can you do with this curve? I'm going to select it and I'm going to this little button here and I'm going to bevel. I'm just going to select the circle and you've got yourself a tube. Now I can uh, do anything with this tube, extrude, G, just like a regular mesh, it just isn't a mesh fix. 
let me see w subdivide g g things like that but one other possibility with the curve is well i'm going to delete everything delete add mesh cube z b invert delete vertices and let's say i'm going to make some kind of shape b b fix see now i've got this wall normals so i'm going to select this edge and press p separate selected now i'm going to change this into a curve and let just leave it be for a moment and i'm going to give this curve some shape now let's say duplicate snap cursor snap cursor selected extrude extrude snap cursor selected g spin let's say the other way around control keep at seven spin spin top view again like something like this for instance extrude now let's make it really fun like i'm going to snap my cursor here and b p separate selection so i've got this shape and i've got this shape just like i did with the circle i'm going to change this into curve as well alt c curve and there's one important item i have to set the origin to 3d cursor to this the beginning of the curve now what does it do okay, now i'm going to, so to select this i'm in this panel here select q2 and now it changed and i can convert it back to a mesh but i think it's a bit big let's scale this down so like so alt c curve, mesh from curve join it with the other object ctrl j edit mode select all remove doubles normals and i'm going to select non-manifold just the top part and fix it now now this shape is wrapped around the edge of, of my mesh i can delete this and uh, well that's pretty tough to do with beveling i suppose so that's a very powerful tool as well i guess i have to mention object origins as well an object's origin is this orange dot in the middle in this case the origin is located in the center of the cube and if i press the edit mode uh, top key snap my cursor here i could change this origin to say origin to 3d cursor now it's it's located at this corner now what is what does the origin do the origin is actually the global location of of the object itself so I, I can press the N key, Nicholas, and here you have a transform. It was centered along the, in the global grid at zero, but since I switched to this corner, it's now located at one, one minus one. I could just say no, zero, 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 enter. Here we go. Now it's in this. Now the object's origin is located in the center, and the object itself isn't, because I changed the object's origin. So that's what you can do with object origins. If I'm just going to scale it, uh, it's re redefine its scale to say 0.5 along X, it will be scaled in relation to its origin. So that's an important thing. I could now, for instance, also say I could apply this, Control A, 
apply scale. That's Control A. A very in in interesting tool, scale. And now the scale of the object is uniform again. And therefore, now this thing is actually located here. Just switch back to this area. Uh, like so. Now its, it's scale is 0 0.5. If I look at this, at this point here, it's located at x2, which is not correct. It's at x minus 1. However, this is a local dimensions. If I go to global, you can clearly see it is located at minus 1. And locally, it's located at minus 2 because the object is scaled. So if I just want to keep this object like it is and I want to make it a uniform scale again, I could press Ctrl A, apply, apply scale. Now the scale is 111. And then and I switch to edit mode and now this point's location locally is at minus 1 and globally it's also at minus 1. I could just move this object just along the floor and put it here somewhere. Tab key. Now this this vertex is located globally at 3, 3 x, y. Locally it's still located at x minus 1. Let's take a closer look at this panel and in order to do that uh, let's uh, go a little nuts. I do mean literally I'm going to design a nut and it's not as easy as it seems. So let's just remove this one and add a cylinder. Mesh cylinder. A nut is nothing more than a hexagon with a hole in it so uh, let's do that. A cylinder hexagon is six vertices and I'm going to design an M5 nut, which has a wrench size of 8 millimeters, which means a 4 millimeter radius, and it also has a 4 millimeter depth. So this is basically how the nut would look, in essence. However, I'm, I have a problem here. When I go to the edit mode, and now I'm going to scroll down to mesh display, I'm going to select length. Now you can see the length of each of the selected edges. So let's just say this is now 8 millimeters. Well, the wrench size should be 8 millimeters, which is actually not this, but this. So how do I make this 8 millimeters? Well, there is a solution. I'll just select the top view and remove these vertices. Now I select every kin, duplicate, rotate. So now I have these faces. I'll switch to object mode and now I'm going to back to this panel again and I can fill in dimensions. So range size should be 8. I'll just select 8 for X and Y. 8. And you can see that the scale uh, adjusted accordingly. So now I'll just have to apply the scale and it's one uniformly. So I'll just recreate my hexagon again, rotate 30 degrees, duplicate, rotate 60 degrees the other way. And I'll just turn this on, automatically remove doubles. So this is the hexagon. An M5 nut has a 5 millimeter screw hole, so I'm going to do that as well. Sure, why not? I'm just going to add another cylinder with, well, 24 vertices, radius 2.5, that makes a 5 millimeter diameter. And all I have to do is remove these faces, delete faces, and we're almost done. However, I would like to make a nice bevel to this nut as well. So I'm just going to edge selection mode, select these edges, Ctrl B, 0.2. And I'm going to make it a bit refined, so that's, that's it. And as for, I'm going to fix these, Alt F, Alt 
F normals. Well, this is basically the nut, but I need another bevel, but I have to do that manually. So I'm just going to snap my cursor here. Duplicate, rotate. It's quite a job to, to do. Designing a simple nut, isn't it? Uh, 45 degrees. And I'm cutting a bevel manually. Right there. So I'm going to extrude. And I'm going to delete, delete only faces. Only faces so that I can retain the vertices. I just snap my cursor here. And spin this. And that would be uh, for a Boolean intersection. Spin. Let's make that six. Spin, spin, spin. Like this. Remove doubles, normals. And this is what I use to cut into the nut. So let's say intersect Boolean. And this is what a nut should look like. However, I have some vertices that I don't need. So I'll select everything, delete, limited dissolve. That removes most of the vertices. However, there are quite, there's still two that I don't want either. GG. GG. Yeah, that looks better. I'm going to remove these faces and fix them again. Alt F. Now they're triangles. I want quads, so I'll just press Alt J. Alt Join. And now they're quads. Now I want to make these the same way, so I could do this Ctrl T, triangles, and then Alt J. And this is how it should look like. Now I can just select them all like this. But then it's I would be busy. So I have another selection menu. Shift G and you don't have to rem remember it all because maybe you'll never use it. But I'm going to select area. Now Ctrl T, Alt J. Now that looks more like it. Now for the bottom of it. Now let's just bevel this as well. Ctrl B, point 0.2. Right. And front view. Vertex selection. I'm going to remove these. And let's remove the lengths as well for a moment. Extrude, scale Z minus 1. A, B, duplicate scale Z minus 1. Normals. Now, this is what a nut should look like. As for the mathematicians amongst us, and who doesn't like a bit of math occasionally, right? Anyway, uh, there's an alternate solution to rescale this to proper size. I just press the edit mode tab key. At this moment, this is 6.928. Fix. Its angle is 30 degrees and this is 8. Well, in fact, I want this to be 8. So I have to rescale it. And to be precise, I have to scale it by 1 divided by cosine of 30. Yeah, it's quite a mouthful, but that's, uh, that's what it is. Let's do it. Scale, Shift C. I'm typing asterisk, Shift 8. And then 1 slash cosine double parentheses in between and type in 30 and this doesn't work well obviously planter does not like degrees it needs to be radians so i'm going to type radians and then another set of parentheses and here 30 enter and now it's eight wide i'm going to switch back and i'm going to try in object mode in the transform property properties, I'm just going to left click drag these two numbers, X and Y. I can just edit them simultaneously now. And I'm going to type it here. Let's see what happens. 1, 
divided by cosine. Of course, it works, but radians 30, and this is supposed to be it. Yay! Enter. Let's just apply Ctrl A, apply the scale, and switch back to edit mode. As you can see, it's eight wide. Perfect. Now, one final comment about faces. If I switch to edit mode and look at this face, it's not a single face. It's actually, if I press Ctrl T, a lot of triangles. But it's hard to edit like this. It's much nicer to just keep it like this. But you have to remember, so I'm going to just delete these and add a plane. And if I lift up one of the vertices, it's not in the same plane anymore. So what shape is this exactly? It's actually undefined. And most programs have trouble shading it. Uh, it's a big no-no, in fact, to do it like this. It's better to just make it triangles like so. And now you can see the definite shape because it could be like this. And I could turn this around or it could be like this. So whenever uh, vertices do not occupy the same plane, make sure to triangulate them. That's uh, always the best thing to do so that you know how this shape looks. Otherwise, you might start a 3D print or something and it would come out completely different as what you expected. So that's a final remark about faces. This concludes this exceptionally long video tutorial on Blender modeling. In advance, I did say that it was a fast Blender tutorial, but it doesn't mean it's not a long one. Because, well, you can just quickly glance over the tools available, but then it's very easy to forget them in the morning and start all over again. I'd rather look at each of these tools and techniques, how to use them. And since Blender has so many tools, well, then you can expect it to be a long video. Here's a final overview. I can scroll down a little and you can see some more. Well, there's curves and modifiers. And we finally handled the transform panel as well. And there's this, uh, a couple of additional selection tools and just a couple more editing tools. I will be posting a link in the description to a full list of uh, tools that we covered in this tutorial. I might be making a next video about uh, textures, but there is so much more YouTubers out there that deliver some great videos on Blender. For instance, Blender Guru. He's... Uh, He's got some amazing content, very advanced stuff, as well as uh, some Blender beginner tutorials. And then there's Zacharias Reinhardt. He's posting some great material as well. So, which remains me to tell you, well, good luck with Blender. I hope you enjoy it and take care.